well, I didn't screw up. The angle isn't messed up. I deliberately did this because I'm hiding something up there and I'm not going to show you till Sunday. I'll give you a little sneak peek at the end of the video. This is what they tell you to do to get longer view duration. Tell them you do something at the very end so people watch it longer. I'm saying, well, why aren't they just going to skip to the end of the video to see what you want to do? That's what I do. But in my case, watch the whole video, guys, and I'll give you a little sneak peek at the end. New viewers, Water Change Wednesday is question and answer. So you guys ask questions out in the video in the description in the comments below. I'll answer them there and then I answer them here. Let's get into it. Water Change Wednesday. First question, Johan asks, can I add a few pieces of extra live rock to my already established tank? Will it be counted as bio load and will it overload and stress my fish? What he didn't say in this question, was it already cycled? If that was the case, yes, he could put it in and yes, it would be considered as a little bit more bio load. There's always microbiology on anything that you put into the tank, even if it's rock, but it would be minimal. Make sure whenever you add a new piece of live rock that it's a piece of cycled live rock, you know, that it's been in an established aquarium. If you add an uncultured piece of live rock into your tank, it's going to have die off on it and you're going to get an ammonia spike and nitrite spike which could kill everything in your tank. All right, next question. IBW bro, how's it going dude? He asks me how I got my coral to overgrow the bottom of my tank, the floor of the tank, and he's referring to the zoanthids that I have, the zoas. Zoas can do that, and I responded to him in his comment. They take a long time. What you do is they come on a small frag, sometimes three or four. You just rest that on the bottom of the tank, make sure it's stable. If you had to, a little glue will hold it. And then just feed and take care of your tank. What you see here probably took a year and a half to two years from three or four small little polyps and the red ones I just put in maybe six months ago so they're kind of growing slow. Obviously green star polyp, if you put a rock on the floor of your aquarium, put some green star polyp on it and just let it go. It's going to grow like grass. It'll reach out and grow around. As you can see in my tank, it's almost out of control. SNL Reefer asked, how many days after do you start your nano reef should its water be changed? So I responded to him, well, it, once again, it goes back to if your rock is all cycled and you're starting to add bio load, whether you add a few fish or you're adding some coral, whatever you're adding, then you get into your normal routine of changing water. Maybe in the beginning, the first couple weeks, I would change a little less. Remember, you're always testing, especially after you've added bio load. You wanna test every few days just to make sure there's no spikes. Do a lot of testing and let that be your guide in terms of the quantity of water change. If you notice any kind of spike in ammonia or nitrite, you shouldn't have any ammonia spike if it's fully cycled but sometimes the nitrite can sneak back in there. So in that case, then you want to do 100% water change. This is a new one, Bobcat's Reef. Is there a good way to lower nitrate and phosphates without chemicals? I've had some videos out on my lanthanum chloride to lower phosphate, and I use that from time to time. I told Bobcat, I like that. I told Bobcat that yes, if he goes in and does a large water change, I told him 75% change. He says his parameters were 20 parts per million nitrate and 0.3 phosphate. When I saw that, I went, wow, that's not that bad. 
There's a lot of reefers that keep 20 parts per million in a very healthy tank, and .3, I've been there in both my tanks. That is a little high in the phosphate range. The number one natural way to remove phosphate is in your sand bed, and I mentioned this before, sand beds are awesome, but in my experience, over time they collect organics. All the stuff settles and if you don't have enough biodiversity in the sand bed, and in my opinion, even if you do, there's just not enough in there to remove that and that settles in and it creates phosphate. So what I told him to do is vacuum his sand bed, go through his entire sand bed, vacuum it during a water change, and do a large 75% change. Question from Jenny, she asks about a mandarin fish. At first she asked if I got it at Absolutely Fish because I did a, I did a video on the mandarin a long time ago and I also took some footage of Absolutely Fish in Clifton, New Jersey, but that is not where I got it. I got an aquacultured mandarin from SNA Aquatics and I believe they're in Florida or Tennessee, I'm not sure. They get their mandarins from Biota Marine and their aquaculture there. She went to the fish store and they told her they can only survive on live copods. And that is not true. If you get a live caught one, I would say absolutely. You're not gonna train it. It's very difficult to train a mandarin that's been live caught on pellet food or dry food or frozen food. They just, in my experience, they don't eat it. The aquacultured mandarins are raised on 0.5 millimeter pellets. This is the one from SNA Aquatics or Biota Marine. They're sinking 0.5 millimeter bio pellets and they sink to the bottom and he just goes around and picks them out. So I haven't fed any pods other than what's naturally growing in there, which I know I have some. That isn't the reason that he's staying alive. It's because I feed daily these 0.5 millimeter sinking pellets. I'm sitting crooked on this chair, guys. I see I'm still not used to the studio. Like, you know, I'm kind of just not, I gotta figure something out here. All right, so I, that's enough questions for today, I think. What do you guys think? I did want to say thanks to the new subscribers. I really appreciate that. I hope my content will be satisfying to you guys. But I wanted to tell you this. I will always be true to the subscriber. I can't tell you, when I was getting my first month, I got three views on one of my first videos. I'm going, oh man, did you see it? I figured I'd give you a little taste. So have a great rest of the night and be ready for Sunday. I'm gonna show you the events that led up to the surprise.